بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Imam Zayd Shakir and I'm here to talk to all of my wonderful brothers and sisters out there about the, the virtue of the days we are about to enter which are the first 10 days of the Hijjah uh, and uh, some of the things that we can do. Most of us would not be going to Hajj anyway. The overwhelming majority of us uh, would not be going to Hajj in any case. So the fact that foreigners are uh, not uh, allowed this year, wisely I think, uh, to make the Hajj uh, doesn't affect what we should be doing. And we, what we should be doing, brothers and sisters, is taking advantage of the tremendous days that are, uh, we are about to enter. Uh, our, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is related to have said on, on Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, قال, قال رسول الله Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ما من أيام الأمل الصالح أحب الله ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من هذا من هذا العشر يعني العشر ذي الحجة قالوا يا رسول الله ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا الرجل خرج بماله ونفسه ثم لم يرجع من ذلك بشيء. And so the Prophet وسلم, this hadith is found in the compilation of Imam al-Bukhari and others. He says that there are no days, as related by Ibn Abbas, there are no days of the year during which the righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these days. They said, O Messenger of Allah, not even jihad, struggling in the way of Allah, in a way that places your life uh, in jeopardy. He said, not even jihad in the way of Allah, not even struggling in the way of Allah, except a man who goes forth in the way of Allah with all of his wealth and with his life, and then he returns with neither. In other words, he loses all of his wealth and he loses his life struggling in the way of Allah to defend the faith and the faithful. La ilaha illallah. So that tells you the virtue of these days, that the only action during these days that's better than saying la ilaha illallah, than saying subhanallah, than saying La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Then saying Alhamdulillah The only action that's better Is a man who goes forth With all of his wealth And his life And he loses them all struggling In the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So brothers and sisters What does that tell us? It tells us that we should take advantage Of this incredible opportunity that Allah Ta'ala is extending to us. Allah Ta'ala is extending to us an opportunity to engage in actions during this time. The reward is multiplied over and beyond the reward of anything other than the action of the man that we mentioned. La illallah. In fact, the Hajj that many people undertake is described as being jihad. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned ni'm al-jihad hajj that Hajj is the most excellent form of struggle in the way of, uh, of a way, uh, in the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we should take advantage, brothers and sisters. We should fast during these days. These days are, are an incredible opportunity to earn immense reward for our fasting. We should recite the Qur'an during these days. 
we should try to do if we have an opportunity and many of us, us have more time than we would normally have because we're still not commuting back and forth to work. Many of us are still working for home, uh, from home rather. So that time can be spent with the book of Allah, Azawajal. We can engage in awrad and adhkar that normally we might not engage in anticipating the enhanced reward that's promised to, uh, to us from Allah by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we should take advantage of that. On this subject of jihad or struggle, we should note that as we prepare to enter into these, these days, that these days are described as having a reward, or the action rather, the action of these days are described as having the reward of a man who loses his life and all of his wealth defending the faith. Ido as, as we, and then we have our Eid on the 10th day. Ido Fitr is preceded during the last 10 days of Ramadan by Laylatul Qadr, and one of those nights, most predominantly, there are different opinions, but the strongest opinions, it's one of those nights, and many scholars opine that the most likely night is the 27th of the month. Laylatul Qadr, which precedes Eid al-Fitr, how is it described? Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Laylatul Qadr min alfi shahr that the night of power is better than 1,000 months. Now is this just any 1,000 months? Our Prophet Sallallahu is related that these 1,000 months, these 83 years are 83 years of a man who dons his armor, who puts on his armor goes forth and defends the faith for 83 years and during those 83 years while he's defending the faith he's praying he's fasting he's remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laylatul qadr is better than the worship of that man in that state so note brothers and sisters laylatul uh eid al-fitr is preceded by days whose actions are described as being better than the actions of a man who goes forth to defend the faith and he loses his life and his property so doing. Eid al-Adha rather. Eid al-Fitr is preceded by days because Laylatul Qadr can be any of those last 10 days. So Eid al-Fitr is preceded by days, the actions during which are described as uh, nights rather the actions during which are described as being better than a man who dons his armor and goes forth to defend the faith for 83 years approximately 1000 months so what does this tell us brothers and sisters number one it tells us that we have a generous lord we have a generous lord and the Hajj is, is, an, is our humble, meager, human attempt based on our limited and scanty human resources to go and acknowledge the, the, the great bounties and gifts of our Lord and to worship Him at His sacred house. This is what we're endeavoring to do. It tells us that our Lord is generous. It tells us that our religion is a religion of struggle. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Struggle in the way of Allah should rightfully be the case. So the Hajj, which is a struggle, is preceded by days which we should struggle in our religion. We have to understand, this religion is not cheap. This religion being, it's the, the best thing that this dunya can give us. As Imam Ali mentioned, مِن نَعِيمِ الدُّنْيَا إِنْ يَكْفِيَكَ الْإِسْلَامُ نِعْمَةً 
that from the blessings of the world, Islam suffices as a blessing. Islam suffices as a blessing. If we got gold, silver, diamonds, precious jewels, yachts and cars, whatever the world could give us, and we didn't leave this world with Islam in our heart, we leave impoverished. But if we leave this world without the gold, the silver, the diamonds, the cars, the yachts, but we leave this world, and la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If that cold, that saying is firmly nestled into the depths of our hearts, we've left this world rich. We've left this world with everything we need to succeed in the Akhirah. And so these days are an opportunity for us to enrich ourselves, brothers and sisters. These are days where we should extol the greatness of Tawheed, la ilaha illallah. This is the, the, the best, one of the best things we can say. Not because I want it to be so, but our Prophet is related to have said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qayhu ma qudtuhu ana. وَمَا قَالَهُ النَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي uh, مِنْ قَبْلِي, excuse me, the best thing that I have said, خَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُهُ أَنَا The best thing that I have said. وَقَالَهُ النَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِي And the best thing that the prophets who preceded me have said, لا إله إلا الله is لا إله إلا الله and these are days when we say la illallah, the reward is unimaginable. The reward is unimaginable. May Allah give us tawfiq, may Allah, may Allah give us uh, taysir, may Allah give us kabul. These, day, these days also contain a day, the ninth day of this month, the day of Arafah, Yawma Arafah. And this day, <clears throat> Excuse me. Fasting it involves the reward or the expiation of this year, the current year, present year, and the coming year's sin. Two years of atonement for our sins for fasting one day. Again, this illustrates the, 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 the generous and magnanimous nature of our Lord. And this is for sinners, it's for the pious who might slip into sin uh, inadvertently. It's for the sinners who might consciously sin. It's a reminder that our Lord wants good for us. And so we should try everything in our power to be good to our Lord. Our Lord wants good for us. We should strive, we should endeavor, we should try to do everything in our power to be good to our Lord. And one of the ways that that goodness from us is expressed. And what does the Messenger of Allah say about this goodness? <inaudible> that Allah is good and pure and only accepts that which is good and pure. And one of the ways that we render ourselves good and pure brothers and sisters is with a good niya and with pious actions that are based upon those intentions or niya. Niya meaning intention for those who might be unfamiliar with the Arabic term. So brothers and sisters, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? And just as in Ramadan, before Ramadan, we're encouraged to fast during the month of Sha'ban. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was related to, to, not, to have not fast voluntarily in any month to the extent that he, he fasted during the month of Sha'ban. Why? To prepare himself for Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, we're already in fasting mode. And one of the wisdoms of fasting the entirety of the first uh, eight days, if you will, of those ten, is to prepare us for the ninth day. 
And so when Yom, Yom Arafah comes, we are already in fasting mode. So it's easy for us to take advantage of this tremendous opportunity for our current years and our coming years' sins to be expiated. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. This Yom Arafah, this day of Arafah is a day it's related by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that there is no day of the year when more people are liberated from the hellfire than the day of Arafah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And this, this is the real liberation. You know, people are talking today about liberation. In the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd, the tragic uh, incident uh, that happened in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and then the uprising for racial justice and liberation of black lives and everything that you're all familiar with. But the true liberation, and this is something Muslims must remain cognizant of. We cannot abandon our faith, our teachings, our, our aqidah, and then instrumentalize Islam, making Islam an instrument that serves one pur purpose, racial or ethnic justice or liberation. So justice, of course, is an integral part of Islam. But if we don't first and foremost liberate our souls, liberate our minds, liberate our consciousness from our carnal appetites, lust and desires, from our greed, from the diseases that assail the heart and the soul, and we attain those other liberations, Yom al Qiyamah, those would definitely benefit us in the world. And we're not trying to dismiss the fact that this is also a part of Islam, striving for worldly freedom and liberation. Be upright for justice, witnesses for Allah. So we have to be upright for justice. Be just, that's greater to God consciousness. So this is part of our religion. But, we have priorities. And our first and foremost priority, priority is liberating ourselves from the hellfire. And brothers and sisters, as we mentioned, on this day, Allah liberates more people from the hellfire than any other day of the year. And so what do we have to do? It's what? It's owing to what? It's not owing to our actions. Our actions are necessary but not sufficient, to use that language. Our actions are praying during these days and on that day. Our reciting the Qur'an during these days and on that day. Our fasting during these days and on that day. These days being the uh, pre preceding days of the Hijjah. All of those are necessary but but proficiency comes through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one's action will enter them into paradise. Not even you, O Messenger of Allah. Not even me. Only if Allah envelops me in His grace and His mercy. Not even me. Only if Allah envelops me in His grace and His mercy. So the grace and the mercy of Allah, that's where the sufficiency comes from. And so we have to expose ourselves through our actions to be recipients of the grace and mercy of Allah. This is uh, a, this is a beautiful hadith, one of my favorite hadiths, where the Prophet wasallam is related to have said, Seek good, Every moment that you spend on this earth. We mentioned, in Allah tayyibun wa la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is good and pure and only accepts that which is good and pure. 
we have to be people of goodness. And so, seek good, seek good. Every moment you spend on this earth. Brothers and sisters, don't waste your time with wickedness. Don't waste your time with evil. Don't waste your time retweeting garbage. Don't waste your time engaging in the rumors that are circulating. Don't waste your time finding the faults in others. When a law wants to destroy a person, this is something related by many of our spiritual sages, the akabir of the past. When a law wants to destroy a person, he preoccupies that person with the faults of others and makes that person oblivious to their own faults. And so that person is so busy, they might even set up a website where they just pursue and document the faults of others. And they're so busy doing that, they never take the time to consider their own faults. And as a result, their life expires and their own faults have gone unaddressed. Their own sins have gone unrepented for, and they end up in a bad situation. May Allah protect us from that. May Allah bless us to see our faults. May Allah bless us with honest people who will point our faults out to us. May Allah give us the personal integrity to address those faults and to eliminate those faults so that we don't meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're not tayyib. Therefore, we're not acceptable. Inna Allah tayyibun. Allah is good and pure. pure. وَلَا يَقْبَلُوا إِلَّا طَيِّبًا And only accepts that which is good and pure. So, اُطْبُوا الْخَيْرَ دَحْرَكُمْ كُلَّهِ وَتَعَرَّضُوا إِلَى نَفَحَاتِ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكُمْ and expose yourself to the gentle breezes of your Lord's mercy. How do we expose ourselves, brothers and sisters? We expose ourselves through our fast. We expose ourselves through our Quran. We expose ourselves through our uh, awrad and our afkar, through our litanies and our supplications. We expose ourselves through our dua. We expose ourselves through all of the righteous deeds that a believer <clears throat> might perform. And as we expose ourselves during these days, the, the days, the beginning days of the Hijjah, and then on the day of Arafah, the breezes of Allah's mercy are blowing stronger during these days than any other days. And so the likelihood of one of those breezes touching us is greatly enhanced. And then the hadith goes on. And Allah certainly has gentle breezes of His mercy that He touches with whomsoever he desires from his servants. And then it's mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's part of the narration or it was added by some of the commentators. I didn't have an opportunity to check, so I'll say it's mentioned. وَمَنْ أَصَابَتْهُ وَمَنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَعِدَ سَعَادَةً لَا يَشْقَى بَعْدَهَا أَبَدًا and whoever is touched by one of those gentle breezes of Allah's mercy experiences joy that's so profound they're never saddened for the rest of eternity. فَمَنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَعِدَ سَعَادَةً لَا يَشْقَى بَعْدَهَا أَبَدًا لَا الْحِلُّ اللَّهِ Brothers and sisters, this is what life is all about. This is what life is all about. Because these breezes, they're not confined to the wealthy, nor the poor. They're not the exclusive providence or domain of the wealthy, nor the poor. They're not blowing upon the black to the exclusion of the white or the white to the exclusion of the black. 
they're not blowing to the Arab to the exclusion of the Ajam, the, the non-Arab, or the non-Arab to the exclusion of the Arab. They're blowing, they're blowing freely. And any one of us, be us rich or poor, be us black or white, or anything in between, be we Arab or non-Arab, any one of us has the power within ourselves to expose ourselves to one of those breezes of Allah Ta'ala's mercy. So we pray that during these days, we're touched by one of those breezes. We pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala inspires us and gives us tawfiq, creates in us the propensity to expose ourselves to those breezes and to take advantage of the tremendous opportunities that are associated with these blessed days. In conclusion, I'd like to refer to the verse, one of the verses of Hajj in the Quran where Allah Ta'ala, he mentions, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى قول ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق So, I proclaim Allah is addressing Ibrahim alayhi salam وأذن في الناس بالحج Proclaim the pilgrimage amongst humanity. They will come responding, walking, riding on every means of conveyance from every deep and distant mountain pass. It's related that when Ibrahim salam was given that command, he said to, to his Lord, he responded to his Lord, that my voice cannot reach all of humanity. I'm in this valley, surrounded by mountains. Even from my voice can't even penetrate the mountains that surround me. And this is part of our spiritual history, history, brothers and sisters. And our spiritual history is not confined to the laws of social science, anthropology, and sociology, nor to the uh, empirical scientific method. These are affairs of the ruh. These are, uh, are affairs, all of that. The laws governing physical science, the, any social sciences we might observe or think we observe because people are very nuanced and complicated and social theories usually fail to, to capture that nuance and complication, but be that as it is, all of that is associated with this seen world, this, this, this part of the creation that can indeed be empirically verified, alim al shahad. But the affairs associated with many aspects of our religion are, they are connected with alim al ghaib with the unseen world. And Hajj helps to keep the reality of the unseen world alive in our hearts. And as Muslims, when we become so overwhelmed by Alam Alam Shahada, by the seen world, we can actually lose touch with Alam al Ghaib. But Allah reminds us the first the first uh, specific aspect of our belief mentioned in the Quran is our belief in the unseen world. Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitab la Raiba Fi, Kudalil Muttaqin, Aladin Yuminun Abil Raib, Uyukimun of Salah. This is the scripture. There's no doubt concerning it. It is guidance for those mindful of their Lord. Those who believe in the unseen establish regular prayer and they spend from what we have bestowed upon them. The first belief mentioned in detail 
specified is belief in the unseen. This is a reminder for us. And so when Ibrahim, why do I say that? Because the things that I will relate right now, they'll seem strange to a person whose heart, whose senses, whose sensitivities and sensibilities have been overwhelmed by Alim al Shahad, by the realities, laws associated with the seen world. So Ibrahim says, my voice can't reach them. And Allah Ta'ala responds, you make the call. That, that's what you've been ordered to do. You make the call, I will call, I will allow your voice to reach them. And it's related that the mountains, they humbled themselves, they fell low. They evened themselves out. And so when Ibrahim made the call, his voice carried to every corner of the earth. And it said, فَأَجَابَ كُلُّ مَنْ سَمِعَهُ مِنْ حَجَرٍ وَمَدَرٍ وَشَجَرٍ وَمَنْ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ الْحَجِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَانَةِ That everyone heard the, the stones, the earth, the trees all heard the call, as well as everyone who has been decreed that they will make the pilgrimage to the day of resurrection, and they all responded, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. We are coming, our Lord. Ya oh, our Lord, we are coming. We are responding, our Lord, we are responding. I mean, we are coming. And so, Brothers and sisters, understand, when you make your intention for Hajj, when you realize the power of these days, you're not alone. You might be alone in your house because of this virus. You might be in one of those states or cities where the virus is spiraling out of control and you're locked down in your home and shelter in place orders are enforced, but you're not alone, brothers and sisters, because the trees, the stones, the earth, the birds, the animals, they're all saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik with you. They're all joining you. They're all glorifying Allah with you. But we don't know their tasbih, as Allah informs us in the Quran. We are never alone, brothers and sisters. So as you deal with the isolation of this pandemic, as you deal with the, the, the stress of these days and the tension, understand you're not going through this alone. And so join the chorus of creation that is singing the praises of Allah along with you. Glorify Allah, subhanAllah. Thank and praise Allah, alhamdulillah. Extol the oneness of Allah. And this is the Hajj. This is a great assembly of human beings coming together to extol the greatness of Allah. But this is not just for the Hujjaj, for the people who are not on Hajj. We make the takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. There is no God. Allah is the greatest. There is no, there, Allah is the greatest. There is no God but Allah. And so we are extolling the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we're not doing it alone. We're doing it with all of creation. We're doing it with all of creation. And when we understand that, brothers and sisters, we know the power of this religion. And we know that our soul, the power, the potential rather that we have that's actualized when that potential joins the rest of creation in glorifying Allah and extolling the greatness of Allah, of submitting and humbling ourselves 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as those mountains humbled themselves when Allah ta'ala commanded them to do so so that the call of Ibrahim of Abraham could reach every single one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you tawfiq, brothers and sisters. May Allah give you taysir. May Allah create in you the propensity for success. May Allah make things easy for you. All of our brothers and sisters struggling during this time, may Allah remove the anxiety and grief created by this pandemic, this virus. Oh, did I wash my hands when I came home? Was I, did I touch something that had the virus on it? Did I, did I, was I exposed when that person sneezed? Was it the common cold or did they have corona? Is it really uh, carry uh, aerosol and airborne? As they're saying now, because I was only 10 feet away, but they said it can go beyond six feet. Did it reach me? It's anxiety. But if we are close to Allah, that anxiety will vanish like a, 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 a small, shallow expanse, small, ex, a small portion of water. If it was an expanse, it wouldn't be small, but a small, shallow portion of water dissipates in the desert sun. Our grief, our worry, and our, our anxiety will dissipate when the light of truth and the light of dhikr and the light of Qur'an and the light that's generated in our hearts from fasting reaches those griefs and those anxieties, they will dissipate as that shadow puddle of water dissipates in the advancing seat, heat and light of the desert sun. May Allah bless us to do the things that will dry up our anxiety and grief. May Allah bless us to take advantage of these days. Keep your tongues moist with the remembrance of Allah. Keep the words of Tawheed on your tongue. Extol the greatness of Allah. Keep the takbir on your tongue, especially during the, uh, the, from, the, from the time of the morning of the Eid until the end of the third day of Tashriq. That's four days in total. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. All praise is due to Allah is the greatest. There's no God but Allah. All praise is due to Allah. This is Imam Zay Shakir. And praying that Allah blesses you during these days, inspires you, motivates you, uplifts you, uh, causes you to rise up and worship him with fervor, enthusiasm that's born of love. And that he blesses all of us with a very, very special Eid, just as many of us, if not most of us, us if not all of us, virtually, saw that indeed, despite the circumstances, we had a very, very blessed Ramadan. This is Imam Zayd Shakir. Jazakum Allah khairan. May Allah bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.